Unbelief is not the absence of faith. It's the presence of unbelief. There is a difference. Later he says, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. The problem is, is you can have more than one seed growing in your garden. The longer I walk with Jesus, the more I find out he thinks different than me, and he's not going to change. And uh, I'm, I'm the one that's to change. So that's the journey I'm on. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to, we're going to take a story out of Mark 9, but I'm going to read a verse out of Matthew 13, out of the parable of the seed and the sower. I know that it is sometimes dangerous to take elements out of one parable or one story and mix them with another because they don't always translate well story to story. And you can sometimes end up with false information. I know that that's true. So I'm just warning you ahead of time, I'm going to do that. And uh, you'll have to figure it out. Uh, I know that sometimes, uh, or for example, uh, the fire of God is always the judgment of God, except that one time in Acts 2, when the fire of God was the tongues of fire, and tongues are a language of praise, and it's for edification. So it's far from judgment. The snake is always the devil. Except that one time, (laughs) it was Jesus on a cross who became sin on our behalf. Earthquakes were always judgment. Except for that one time in Acts 4, (laughs) when in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, The entire place was shook because of the presence of God. So what you don't want to do is become too rigid. And so I'm I'm going to ask you to approach these two stories loosely because I think one will actually give us the insight we need for the next one. All right, so this is what we're going to start, is the parable of the seed and the sower. Now, because we're not doing the whole story, I'm just going to read one verse. I want to remind you, if you're unfamiliar with the story, parable of the seed and the sower, the seed in this parable is the word of God. The soil is the condition of the heart. Here's a very important lesson. The productiveness or the fruitfulness of a word that God spoke does not validate whether or not it was from God. Because that parable actually gives us four different kinds of soil. Three were no good. The word was authentic, but it just didn't bear fruit. The fault wasn't what God said. See, many people make the mistake of saying, well, we we judge a tree by its fruit. That's absolutely right. But they will say, well, we'll know whether this was a work of God or not by the fruit. Not always. Jesus talked about healing 10 lepers. Only one had a character change enough to return and give thanks. Did it mean the other nine were falsely healed? No. No. God's word, the validity of his word is not validated by what we do with it. In other words, it's not proven by what we do with it. God's not on trial by what I do. I am. In this particular illustration, we have in verse 22, he who receives seed among thorns is he who hears the word And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. So here's the picture. My my wife is the master gardener. She has not been gardening. She's been too sick. We have a garden, though. The pepper plants are not this tall. It's the weeds that are this tall. (laughs) We have been invaded by the weeds in this garden. And it's because we planted certain seeds, but not being able to take care and tend the garden, we have other seeds that have competed for the nutrients, observed the moisture, and have outgrown and actually cast shadow or shade over the plants that were supposed to be prolific and grow and provide food. The word of the Lord is the same way. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Say that with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Say it again. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It does not say faith comes from hearing the word of God. If it did, then let's all of us go home, put on YouTube where they're quoting scripture for the next 24 hours. Let's have it playing 24 seven in our sleep, and we'll have the Wigglesworth kind of faith by Friday. 
It, it just, it doesn't work that way. Faith comes from hearing. It's, it's your connection to the voice of God, but the voice of God is activated by your exposure to the word. It's the word that enhances and trains the hearing. Now here's the challenge, is I've got a word that God spoke to me, but I have another idea, and I have a disappointment, and I've got this criticism, and I've got this complaint, and I've got all these seeds that are vying for the same nutrients, and what does the Bible say happens? It says the cares of this world, the other interests, the other burdens or concerns. Busyness is artificial significance. The enemy works to expand our busyness to increase our cares. The enemy works to expand our activity to increase our cares. Because if he can increase our cares, he plants seeds that compete with the word of God. Mark chapter nine. Verse 17, we're gonna read quite a few verses, so please do uh, follow in your Bible or your neighbors as much as you can, please. Verse 17. Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth gnashes at the teeth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it up, but they could not. And he answered him and said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Let me stop there. I'm, I'm annoyed by, I love this translation, but I'm annoyed by their use, use of this word faithless because it's not what it says. The literal word is the word unbelief. And there's a difference between faithless and unbelief. Unbelief is not the absence of faith, it's the presence of unbelief. There is a difference. Later he says, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. The problem is, is you can have more than one seed growing in your garden. To say it's a faithless garden is not accurate. There's faith in the garden. Are you following my analogy here? To call it faithless not, is not accurate. There's just unbelief there. People come to me and they say, well, I'm, I'm more of, uh, I have an intellectual bent. Oh, you mean you have an unbelieving bent? <laughs> it's nothing to be proud of. God's quite smart and it doesn't interfere with his faith. So if my intellect is affecting my faith, then I know the wrong things. The knowledge of the tree of good and evil, I know the wrong things. I, I fill my garden with seeds that compete with what God is saying. They compete with my destiny. True faith gives you access to your greatest point of intelligence. I believe in the days ahead, we're going to see the greatest intellectualism come out of faith. Yes, Bill, amen, keep it up. The Bible says, by faith we understand. The worlds are made out of nothing. By faith we understand. We don't understand by faith. We, we don't understand Excuse me, we don't believe because we understand. We understand because we believe. Faith gives us access to a level of understanding you can't get through human reasoning. All right, I feel like I'm preaching all by myself here. It's all right, I'm not gonna quit. No, sir, I'm not gonna quit. I'm, I'm teasing, I'm just happy to see so many people in the room. There's humans. I just want you to know this last year I discovered I was addicted to humans. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move on here. <clears throat> Verse 19. He answered and said to him, O faithless generation, I'm going to change it. He answered and said to him, O unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? 
How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Why would he do that in front of Jesus? Because I think it worked in front of the disciples. If you can create enough disturbance with what you see in the natural, it can interfere with what you see in the spirit. The enemy was working to create a disturbance that they saw here that helped them, that caused them to no longer see what they saw here. And that was what God had already willed to happen. Faith doesn't deny a problem's existence. It just denies the problem a place of influence. They brought him to him. He threw him on the ground, wallowed, foaming at the mouth. Verse 21. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. It's interesting. It's the smallest measure of faith I can find in the entire Bible. If there's a smaller one, please show it to me. This one barely moved the needle. When you come to God and say, if you can. <laughs> God, if you have the ability to do this big problem. And the Lord turned the table on him and said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. I've got more than one plant growing in my garden. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him, enter him no more. When the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said, this kind comes out by nothing but prayer and fasting.